Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Voice of Russia for you. I am very glad to see you here and hope that you are glad to see me here as well on your screens. Uh, well, today I'd like to answer a couple of questions that I got from one of my subscribers from the United States. Her name is Vanessa. Vanessa, special thanks to you for your questions. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them right now. And uh, the first question goes like, uh, how do Russians celebrate holidays? Uh, you know, I think that answering these questions, this question I have to mention that during the Soviet times, um, Soviet people celebrated holidays a little bit differently than, than now. Uh, the first of all, people wouldn't go to restaurants. You know, very few could afford could afford going to restaurants because um, all the restaurants charged exorbitant prices, and very few could afford it. That's why vast majority of Russian population, Soviet population, would celebrate holidays at their homes. Uh, you know, normally, uh, at least in big cities, uh, Soviet people and now Russian people uh, lived and now keep living in the big apartment buildings. So people would invite guests over to their apartments and they would celebrate their holidays at home. Um, normally people would prepare different kind of food. Uh, I think the indispensable dishes were like uh, olivier salad, we call it olivier salad. I know that in most countries the salad, salad is called Russian salad. Russians always liked and still like this dish. It has always been an indispensable part of Russian table, of Russian holiday table. Um, you know, also uh, people would prepare uh, boiled potatoes, sometimes uh, fried potatoes, uh, sometimes uh, different types of meat were prepared like chicken, sometimes it was pork, sometimes beef, whatever. Uh, what about drinks? People would drink vodka, of course, it's a traditional Russian drink, uh, so people used to drink vodka. Uh, children used to drink uh, homemade soft drinks, you know, like um, we call it kampot. Kampot is, uh, is a drink that is made of some berries that are boiled in the water uh, on a gas range then this uh, substance is, is chilled and after that it can be served. So also People would go to, to the store and buy some fizzy drinks like Pepsi Cola, Fanta and stuff like that. Um, some types of lemonade. Uh, by, the way, by the way, Fanta and Pepsi Cola became available, if I'm not mistaken, in 1979. Uh, right before the Olympics that were held in Moscow in 1980. Uh, so people would sit around the table, toast uh, each other health, uh, toast the holiday, people would uh, gather around. So, you know, it was pretty traditional, pretty simple. Um, uh, and I think I have to mention that during the Soviet times 
primary holidays were, of course, uh, the New Year and the Victory Day. And I think there still are. And, uh, you know, I started with saying how during the Soviet times uh, we celebrated the holidays. So I think the, the primary difference is that during the Soviet times people didn't, people wouldn't go to a restaurant. Nowadays a lot of people go to the restaurants because the restaurants have become available for normal people. And today, you know, I think somebody invites others over to their houses, somebody goes to a restaurant, so it's it's up to the people, you know, and there is no any strict tradition how to celebrate holidays. But uh, what about the? So I, I I have already said that the primary holiday has always been the New Year. Uh, neither during the Soviet times nor now. Uh, however, no, 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 I am a little bit mistaken. During the Soviet times, people didn't celebrate uh, Christmas. People only celebrated New Year, the New Year. Because, you know, Soviet Union was a de-Christianized country. We didn't have any religion. However, of, cor of course, some people believed in God, of course, uh, but, you know, according to the government policy, they, we didn't have such a holiday as Christmas. We only had uh, the New Year holiday. And, of course, uh, it has always been uh, the, f uh, the favorite holiday of all children in our country. And how was it celebrated? Uh, again, as mm, as during all of the other holidays, people would sit around, would gather around a table, uh, would prepare different types of food. As I said, uh, Russian salad, potatoes, uh, different types of meat. Uh, some you know some sliced sausage you know sausage uh, was very popular some different sorts of sausage because you know it was very difficult to get anything during the Soviet times because people used holidays uh, as an opportunity to eat something delicious you know for example it was very difficult to get a sausage somewhere and people did their best to deliver this food onto the holiday table and people used the opportunity to relish you know this delicious food um, and you know it's interesting enough that uh, tangerines were Tangerines were very popular at the on the on the New Year table. So even we have such a you know there is this the smell of tangerines reminds us of the New Year. So whenever you smell tangerines, you remember the New Year holiday. Very funny, but it's true. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Normally, people would gather around the New Year table at about maybe 9 or 10 o'clock, sometimes at 11 o'clock p.m. of course, uh, in order to uh, say their goodbye uh, to the leaving year. So they would drink, normally they would drink uh, vodka or brandy, cognac. Um, to say farewell words uh, 
to the year that is leave that that, that leaves, and before midnight, people would fill their flutes with champagne, and at midnight when uh, the bells ring, people would click their flutes full of champagne, say Happy New Year and drink this champagne. And after midnight there were some TV programs on, on TV, some musical programs, some stand-up shows and stuff like that. And people would watch them normally until I think 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and after that people would go to their beds. Children of course sometimes went to bed a little bit earlier and what about gifts? You know, they had, you know there has never been a certain tradition in Russia or in Soviet Union uh, in terms of when to present gifts. You know, it was, you know, up to everybody, you know, people could exchange gifts right on coming over to, 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 to the apartment, sometimes uh, during the holiday, uh, d d during the holiday, sometimes after the holiday, so they, there has never been a, any tradition about exchanging the gifts. Uh, what goes for children, of course, it was, uh, I think it was tradition, traditional to leave gifts uh, until uh, under the bed or under the tree, under the Christmas tree. Of course, I, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you that, uh, of course, it's our tradition, as I think yours in the West, uh, to decorate a Christmas tree. It's uh, an indispensable part of of the new year, of the new year holiday. And, you know, and it's very funny that the Christmas trees uh, very, very often were kept for a very long time in our apartments. So sometimes we would throw them away you know, after two, sometimes after three months, <laughs> you know, so it was very funny. But normally there, there was a tradition to uh, keep the Christmas tree until the new year that was celebrated according to the old uh, Julian calendar. Uh, probably you don't know that before the Great October Socialist Revolution that was in in the 1917, uh, Russia lived. Russia had lived uh, according to the Gregorian calendar, and after the Great October Socialist Revolution, it changed to the. Julian calendar, uh, but Russian Orthodox Church until now keeps living according to the old uh, Julian calendar. I, I might uh, mix them up, I'm sorry. So, uh, and according to the old calendar, Russian Orthodox Church uh, celebrates the New Year on the 14th of January. Why? Because there is a two weeks difference between the two calendars. And according to the old calendar, the 25th of December is the 7th of January, according to the new calendar. That's why 
Russian Orthodox Church celebrates uh, Christmas on the 7th of January because the 7th of January is 25th of December. For, uh, I'm sure that for many people it's very difficult to understand, but I think if you do your best you will, you will understand what it is. And the New Year holiday is on the uh, 14th of January. Uh, so, I have already forgotten what I was talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, well, well, okay, I have recollected. So, there was a tradition to keep the Christmas tree in our apartments until the so-called Old New Year, or in other words, the New Year that is celebrated according, according to the old calendar. So we used to keep, and we still, we used to keep, and we are still keeping the uh, Christmas trees in our apartments until the 14th of January. Some, t you know, uh, probably some people, maybe majority of people throw, uh, throw away the Christmas tree after the 14th of January. Some people keep those trees a little bit longer, so it depends. There is no any strict tradition. And that's what goes for the new year. Uh, what goes for other holidays? You know, again in the Soviet Union people would celebrate them practically in the same way as I just described. Uh, what about now? It's uh, for some people it's still the same, others who can afford more go to some restaurants where they uh, book tables, some people go to other countries to celebrate the new year, so it's very different, it's very different. And of course uh, now people celebrate the Christmas as you in the West but we celebrate our Orthodox Christmas on the on the 7th of January and uh, some people again after the 7th of January uh, celebrate uh, the new year according to the old calendar that is on the 14th of January something like this uh, what about other holidays? As I've, as I've just said, some people celebrate them in their houses, some people go to the restaurant. So, you know, it depends. And what about, ah, of course, the second after the new year, the second uh, major holiday for everyone, for, for most people is birthday, birthday party. Again, what about birthdays? People celebrate them differently. Some people celebrate them at home, some people go to a restaurant. But when you celebrate your birthday at home, again, as in the weather is a tradition uh, to prepare a birthday cake, with candles. We stick candles into this cake, uh, we lit them up and uh, the person whose birthday is celebrated has to extinguish the, hand, the candles by blowing with all he, her or his might. And if he or she has managed to to, dis to extinguish the candles. It's a very good sign. It's a very good sign. If uh, he or she hasn't, it's not a problem. You know, it happens quite often. Sometimes it's very difficult to extinguish all the candles. And um, 
What about the table? It's again salads, potatoes, uh, meat, sliced sausages or others to meat and something like this. Uh, also there is a tradition for children to go to McDonald's to celebrate uh, birthday parties because um, as you know McDonald's, as you know McDonald's offers this service so you can come over to McDonald's uh, book uh, birthday party and you know, it's very convenient that children like the McDonald's food not only children, by the way. <laughs> I go to McDonald's as well. I like it. Not, not quite often, but sometimes I like it. So, I think, I think that's it about the way we celebrate holidays. Um, maybe I have forgotten to say something. I'm sorry. If you have... If I have forgotten to tell you something, if you were expecting uh, me to tell you some more, feel free asking me other questions. I'm quite open. And uh, the second question that came from Vanessa goes like, how do people greet each other in Russia? You know, it's, it's pretty simple, as most people just, what goes for man they just shake hands, sometimes exchange a couple of words. Uh, what goes for women, you know, men don't shake hands with women, they just say hello. Uh, women, in most cases, I think, say just say hello to each other. Sometimes they give a very slight peck to each other. Uh, sometimes very close friends, male friends, can hug each other. Sometimes, not always. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's not a tradition, for example, to meet each other on the street and start hugging. No, it's not in our tradition. Normal, normally, we just shake hands and keep going. Uh, you know, I think the, one of the distinctive features of Russians is that we don't have the small talk culture. Uh, you know, I have an American friend who once told me, he said, you know, I recently saw a couple of Russians who met each other on the street, they just shook hands and kept going. We didn't ask we, we didn't exchange a word with each other. And I said, you know, it's, it, it's okay. Probably they just didn't have anything to say. Maybe they had seen each other the day before. They know everything about uh, how their things are going, were going. And he said, you know, nevertheless, I'm surprised they, they had to make some sort of small talk. He says, he said, you know, I don't mean that they have to really try to find out uh, how they are, but just they didn't stick to the culture of small talk. I said, you know, that they don't, we don't have a small talk culture. We, in most cases, we talk to each other only if we really want to find out how we are. If you don't want, if you are not interested in, uh, in the other person affairs, we just say nothing. So that's our distinctive feature. You know, maybe it's surprising for you, maybe not, but it is. So, uh, Ah, and probably I've forgotten to say that, uh, for, exa for example, when children uh, visit their parents, it's okay to hug and kiss each other. It's okay.